to fishing. Trout fishing if you want. Um, so just to show you where it is, it's in, well, it's near Cambridge, just down from Huntington. So it's just a zoom out. There you go, UK. Zoom in. So you can, there is some bank fishing here. You can paint do some bank fishing for pike and trout and things like that. Um, very big venue. You'd have to do, for the trout fishing, you'd have to do quite a bit of research. Um, trout fishing is something I'm just getting into. Um, so this is primarily sort of a guide at um, predator fishing. Um, so pretty much you can book it with Angler Water Parks, I believe. Um, you park your car in this car park here. There's a fishing lodge. Um, you go in and see them. You pay online or you book it over the phone first and then you pay it in the morning. I think it's like you're on the walk from 8 till 5. Uh, maybe a bit different in the summertime. But basically it's boat fishing. They give you a boat and you can explore this playground here. It's apparently it's 1,500 acres. So it's a hell of a lot of water. Obviously it's very shallower much shallower around the margins here. However, in the middle, in this area here, and in particular, um, this is the dam end here. There's some extremely deep water up this end. Um, I'll show you a, I've got a, um, a sonar map depths, um, which I can show you um, as well. And um, you can pause it and just have a look at that and see where <coughs> you think it may be best to go. It's primarily, um, everything's done on the drift. Um, you get issued a drogue, as well as your, um, your, your outboard motor, your fuel, um, your life jacket. Um, I think you even get given nets as well to stop um, invasive species into the water there. Um, so basically it's a lot of lure fishing, drop shot fishing, um, you can dead bait. I mean, I suppose there's nothing wrong with you bringing your own small sort of robo anchor, as long as you've got enough rope. Um, and you could potentially sort of anchor up for a dead bait. Um, dead baiting is something they offer. I think it's from... Uh, November to January, or I think the lure fishing starts from sort of September right the way through till Jan January, something like that. Um, so you have to get a permit. I think the permit's about 18 quid, and you have to pay for the boat as well. So you're looking at just over 40 pounds, I think, just for the day or two. And um, you can do trout fishing on there as well, fly fishing from the boat. They hold competitions on there. Um, so with the trout, there's a hell of a lot of trout there. They reckon it's one of the best in the UK. So with that, um, you're going to expect to get one or two pike, which are going to grow seriously big. So it's a very deep water. Um, I personally would focus for the big pike um, in the deep water, especially during the coldest months. That would be my go-to, without any shadow of a doubt. There's nothing wrong with you persevering with lure fishing in the deep water as well to see if you could throw up a real big zander, um, a big perch, um, something like that. It's the same old tale, and it's like on a lot of my videos. If you can find the food, if you can find some bait fish, the other bigger fish, they won't be far away. It's as simple as that. They just follow around everywhere, follow each other around. Um, so there's... From my um, sonar chart, it shows several pockets of seriously deep water in the reservoir, up to 50 feet, I think. Um, they don't last long, so you might find when you start your drift, if you've got an echo sounder, if you start a drift, you might find you sort of drifting off it and go back into the shallows again, or you'll, you'll drift through some bait fish. You may pick off one or two fish. And before you know it, you've sort of moved again. So it pays to have a GPS to record where you're bumping into the fish and then look to position the boat again with those coordinates. Otherwise, you'll, you'll, you'll lose sight. It is quite a big area 
and it may be a bit too difficult to try and line up maybe um, like a farm building to line up with, um, I don't know, um, some sort of aerial antenna from the other side. And you can think, all oh, right, well, we're here. That's got to be somewhere around here. So it's, e it's easy to stray off the mark. At the end of the day, you could just be quite relaxed about it if you're not too fussy and you, you might just drift on to some other fish again. But the deeper water is generally in the middle where my cursor is here, um, all the way right through in here. Um, so if I was gonna if I was gonna be drifting, I'd want to be drifting this sort of area in the middle here, like this. If that was me. Now there's some sort of tower here, there, and that's in an area of deep water. And that's a particular hot spot. Um, and I think there's another one. Excuse me. There's another one over here, up here. All right, that might pay in the morning in the lodge there. It's just if you're not if you're a first timer there, um, instead of wasting time, you know, doodling around, he might just say, "Oh well, your target species has been, has been caught from this area, or it's been yesterday it was caught in this area." Do you know what I'm saying? Or or, or you know, up this area, Farm Bay, or somewhere like that. Um, so you have got land based trout fishing all the way around here and obviously you can drive to a different sector and um, obviously it's going to be easier to land base um, as long as you've got no shrubbery behind you to do your fly fishing and obviously you can do it from your boat as well um, fly fishing is something I've just learned to do so I'm sort of starting to sort of get involved in that but I've caught trout before overseas so I'm not too bothered um, yeah I'm more interested in the sort of the, um, the, the predator species at the minute um, but yeah, so this is an area to try. And um, with regards to sort of um, the gear you need for the lure fishing, you want a real sort of um, one, uh, one set with quite a light outfit of braid, maybe eight pound braid or 0 0.06 braid, something like that, something nice and thin to enable you to get down deep with some quite light jig heads, maybe, I don't know, 10 to 14 gram jig heads, something like that. And um, you could possibly use slightly heavier braid, maybe if, if that's all you've got, or you can stick to your thin braid and put on some. Um, if the wind's blowing a bit and you're drifting a bit fast, um, you might want to put the drogue out, um, which they'll issue you as part of the package. I have my own one, so I might put out two to slow the boat right down. It's important you slow the boat right down. Ideally, you want a day where the wind is not too. Um, um, strong and making it difficult for you um, but if you're drifting too fast that's going to um, bugger up your fishing big styling so it might be that if the wind's blowing strong and you're sort of stuck you might find let's say the wind is blowing so this is facing north Mike that's north up there south down here so let's just say this area the wind's blowing a hoodly off this end here you don't want to be fishing out here because you're just going to be too fast and you'll be blowing up this end. So you probably want to start your drift and focus on fishing this area in here where my cursor is if the wind's, if the wind's blowing up from overland here this way, come up from the south. All right, so just bear in mind, you want to be slowing the boat down as quickly as possible because it really is too deep to anchor and I don't think they supply you with an anchor unless you craftily bring your own one in. Um, but you want to be drifting and covering the ground um, to have a better chance of running some fish. There's quite a lot of perch in here, some big perch in here. Um, two, three, four pound even is not unheard of. Um, there's, there's food zander in there too, and, and obviously a food pike. Um, pike to 40 pounds um, apparently is not unheard of. Um, zander to double figures is not unheard of. Um, so and sometimes the perch fishing can be amazing where they're getting a lot of perch um, obviously if you've got a mate to go with that would be better because then you've got somebody you compare against that means you're, 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 you're fishing um, maybe two to four four sets of gear at the same time as the boat is drifting so if, it's, if you're fishing two rods with your lure fishing you can lower one down and maybe um, you can just have, it, have the lure a foot off the bottom and just the action of the boat bouncing up and down in the um, in the action of the waves is going to make some, some lures on a jig head sort of jig up and down. You might find you'll get a static take like that. You start getting some bangs as a fish grabs it like that. 
And then obviously there's you um, with your set of gear where you can be cast and away from the boat, whether you're drop shotting or jig heading, and um, you can be searching for your fish as the boat is drifting. Okay, so two sets of gear. So you'd probably be all right on your own, but it'd be great if you had another chap at the other end of the boat doing the same thing. And if he runs into a fish, you can sort of see what's happening, so to speak. It helps you to sort of um, get a gauge of what's going on. A sounder is a good idea. Um, however, they are very expensive. The portable ones are very expensive. And um, yeah, so if you, if you haven't got that foresight, you can't quite see where the bait fish are, so it makes the fishing that much slower. Um, but um, but yeah, it's just food for four. I'm not sure if you can hire them. You might be able to hire them. Um, so with regards to gear, so if you're drop shot and you want something like um, maybe a ten pound fluorocarbon trace, you could go down to a six pound fluorocarbon trace with a um, a drop shot hook built into the rig, um, and obviously um, your you variances are some different leads to use to suit the speed of the drift and your thickness of the braid. Obviously, the thinner braid. Bear in mind, if you do hook up with a good fish, don't go crazy with it. Take your time. Remember, the boat is drifting, so you've got the you know the factor of the you know the fish is um, you know you're moving with the boat as well. So you could probably get away with some lighter leads like that. Um, so yeah, there's pike fishing as well. If you want to do some pike fishing, there's probably if you're on the drift, there's nothing wrong with you having maybe a slightly stiffer rod. And having some sort of a boom system set up where you've got maybe a lead to suit the drift. Um, let's just say something quite heavy, about two or three ounce, um, uh, with an anti tangle boom to a um, maybe some fluorocarbon trace about three foot long and then a foot wire trace to maybe um, a dead bait. And touch base with the lead, even if it's deep, wind up a turn or two. And then just let the dead bait just drift along with the boat, with the rod, um, just, you know, just a nip over the rollock so it doesn't go anywhere. You can tie it down if you're worried about it going in. And um, so you could you drag a dead bait like that. You may have some issues with it, with the, um, with the, um, the hooks um, catching into the bottom, picking up a little bit of weed. There might not be too much weed down there. You might pick up a snag like that. So you just got to bear that in mind. So I'd say tie the rod down. Um, you don't want to lose the rod over the side. You could experiment with maybe a jig head through the nose um, or right into the mouth of the actual dead bait and then have a, um, have a, um, a stinger um, trace from the jig head um, with it maybe even just a single hook in the tail or in that area there. So if a fish does grab... And it doesn't quite hook up, the, you know, the, with just the, the, the jig head hook. You've got another trailer hook behind. And then the single hooks won't pick up necessarily catch or pick up any, any weed and stuff like that. So it's just an idea. Um, so jig head, um, you, want a, you, want a, you want quite a selection of different lures to try. Uh, number one, so um, you don't get bored with using the same set of gear. I would... Um, Gunky do some good stuff. Weston do some brilliant stuff. Stanley the Stickleback, um, Shag Tees, Nine Centimeter, um, those um, uh, like Crayfish, um, Mr. Twister Lures, they're pretty good. Um, um, Gunky, I'm um, just trying to think of the name of them. Um, paddle Tiles, Mini Paddle Tiles, about seven centimeters. Just having some different colours and some different options to try when you're drop shotting or when you're just putting a jig head on. You can go to the Carolina rig. If you lose a few sets of gear or you just want to try something different, you could just go to a um, like a ball shot with a, uh, a bead, a swivel, and then go to a sort of a foot-long trace and have a, um, a paddle tail on a, on a hook through the nose, and you can cast that away from the boat, a bit like a jig head, really. Um, you might find you might lose a few gear with the pike a buying it off if you're just fishing the fluorocarbon that could happen um, but you might want to take that risk using the fluorocarbon trace the thin 8 pound, 10 pound fluorocarbon trace because that might be the difference between hooking up with a good perch um, Xander might not be too fussy but the perch might, you, do you know what I'm saying so you've got to, it's deep water but you've still got to um, you've still got to get the finesse um, in your tackle, um, you know, depending on, 
depending on the conditions. Obviously, if it's blowing really windy, what you're looking for is if, when you're fishing in the deep water, you want to be, um, you want to feel when you when you cast out and you're letting your lead, and you've got your hands, um, the braid running out through your through your fingers. You're waiting to feel that lead go boom. And, when, and what you want to do, you want to sort of um, lift the lead and the and the, um, um, the lure up. And then what you what you wait to feel on the braid, you wait to feel a little thud as it hits the um, hit, hits the um, hits the bottom, and that's all you're doing. As the boat's drifting, you're just literally just bouncing it along the bottom. Um, a couple of turns, let it hit the bottom again, let it feel it. It's just staying in contact with the bottom and letting the paddle tail just work, and that's as simple as that. And that's all you're doing. You're just staying in contact with the bottom, and um, you're hoping to run into some fish. And that's all you're doing. And you can vary your cast up. You can sort of cast the left to the right, or clockwise fashion. Um, obviously, you've got your drogues there, which may be a little bit of a, a nuisance. Um, so you just got to be mindful if you've got a fish on, not to sort of, you know, you might want to quickly drag one of them in or something if you've got a good fish on, just to make it a bit easier. You don't get tangled. Obviously, you've got your net as well. And that's pretty much it. Um, so you can drag a dead bait, Carolina rig, drop shot rig, jig head um weedless texas rig you can try if you're fishing around the edges where it's weedier where my cursor is here you might want to try a um a weedless texan rig where you've got a um you've got a lead above the the hook the weed hook and the actual the lure itself you want may want to introduce that to weedy in the middle here i don't think it's gonna be so weedy um, and you could actually run into a trout accidentally. There's no spinners are allowed while you're predator fishing. You're not allowed to mix up your fishing, I don't think. You've got to pay for one or the other. Um, so you can fly fish off a boat for trout, but you've got to, you know, you've got to have all your gear, obviously, and all that. Um, and I think the trout, rainbow trout vary from like two and a half to five pound, something like that. Some really good fishing in here. There'd be some big pike in here. That's why I'd be interested to drift a dead bait just off the bottom as you're drifting through drop shotting um, you could pick up a real big pike like that just dragging a, a dead bait just off the bottom um, and um, yeah you could you could run you, a big Xander would grab that too so yeah that's definitely definitely worth a try if the conditions will let you do it if you're not drifting too fast and you've got it in control but that's pretty much it that's pretty much grab for water um, I don't really know what I was to say other than one day is probably a bit too, if you've not fished it before, one day, you know, it's probably not enough time. You might feel, feel yourself being in a bit of a hurry. You want to sort of go there in a relaxed state. You don't want to be all uptight. Um, might pay to go on your own because, you know, if you've got someone in the boat, may suggest, oh, what, may suggest trying over here when your gut's sort of saying somewhere else. And, you know, so it might be best to cook it over two days. If you book it over two days, Huntington's just around the corner here. Book a Premier Inn, Travel Lodge, something like that, so you're not too far. So you have two days at it. Um, obviously, the lodge can cancel it. Here's the boat yard, look. Here's all the boats. Obviously, the lodge, if it's too dangerous, if it's too windy, they'll just cancel it. So you park in here. I think you grab your ticket and go in. Grab your gear, the gear boat, and out you go. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Sailing club there. Yeah, so sailing club. So for me, you want to avoid the weekends. If you if you if you go and it's a big area, so maybe it doesn't matter, you know. But um, yeah, damn end, deep water in here. All right. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got any sort of questions on there or if there's anything sort of anything you think I've missed off um, just you know add, add, add them on there so for other people can see it but that's pretty much it I think I've got everything pretty much covered on there really like you say you just you just need to be fishing correctly really if the conditions will let you um, and, um, and that's pretty 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 good really um, that'd be um, some, seriously some some of the, some really good fishing there. Some of the best in the country, um, predator and trout. So there you go. 
All right, hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you later. Thank you.